Hey everyone! So today I'm going to be making another tutorial, but I happen to have this outfit that I just bought off eBay for my Caroline doll, who I got not that long ago as a birthday gift for my sister. When I saw her coat pop up for a really good deal, I just couldn't help but buy it. I think I got this for like 23 or 24 dollars, including shipping, and you know, it it's not in the best condition, that's why it was on the cheaper side. The coat itself is fine, except the buttons are a little loose, but her hat came with the spraying damage. So I wanted to show you guys today how I fix fraying fabric, because I buy a lot of secondhand doll clothes and a lot of times they're made from this sort of like satiny material. I'm not really sure what, what it's called, but it's basically like that, you know, material that's really cheap and that I like will keep fraying and fraying and fraying if you don't fix it. And if you try to sew it without doing this, what ends up happening is the thread going through the fabric will cause it to fray more. And I've had this problem for years and years and years. And it wasn't until maybe about a year ago that I learned how to fix it. And this has saved so many doll clothes. I can use this technique to make doll clothes that would otherwise literally be trash and make them new again. And this damage on Caroline's hat is not really so bad. But I am going to show you how I fix it. So basically the concept of this is that you melt, I know this sounds scary, but you melt the edge of the fabric where it's fraying so that it becomes like solid so that way it won't keep fraying. And it only can be done on this kind of fabric. It can't be done on cotton or anything because it'll burn. This kind of fabric actually melts with heat. So that melting is what will prevent it, will seal it, and will prevent it from continuously you know, falling apart, which is good. So all you're really gonna need is a little candle. You can use like, a big candle if you want, whatever, just some kind of candle. I don't burn candles because my sister is really afraid of fire, so I just have these little like tea lights. And then I have a piece of foil to protect your work surface. This is just a little piece of foil I use in the oven when I bake polymer clay or when I do this. And obviously something to light the candle with, so I have some matches. The first thing you're going to do is obviously light your candle. And you definitely don't want anything flammable in the area, you want to be really careful. And as soon as you're done doing this, you want to blow up the candle. So I'm going to take the coat and I'm going to separate free fabric from this, this fabric that I'm trying to melt because I don't want to burn it. And I'm just going to really carefully hold it near the flame and you'll see it's starting to get shorter and that's it melting. And just want to do this really slowly because if you get too close it will like you'll see a little flame for a minute and it'll actually turn like black and you don't want that. And if it's really, really frayed, I will actually like trim off some of the extra fraying so it won't melt in a big glob. If you kind of wiggle it back and forth, you'll create like a nice line. I like to do this right up to where like the fraying has stopped. This is what it looks like up close. I blow out my candle and now I'm going to sew this back together and I'll show you the final result. Okay, so I just finished sewing this back together so basically I had to fold over where I melted just so it had like a nice straight line and then I sewed it back to the furry white part and obviously it's not going to look 100% perfect because of the way this was originally put together. There's going to be like a bit of you know area where my hand sewing is visible but I'm okay with that because it's going to be flipped upwards. So this is what it looks like now. You can see where I had to sew but the edge there is totally smooth. You can't ever tell that it was frayed except for my sewing. And that's what it looks like on the reverse side. And basically, this is just going to be worn, flipped up anyways. So it's virtually undetectable. So I'll put it on my Caroline doll and show you in a second. I just realized that I actually have a Barbie dress that I can demonstrate this on. So this is the dress. And my Fountain Mermaid Barbie was wearing this in storage 
and obviously this isn't her original outfit but this is from a fashion pack and you can see all of the fray damage here this is like the perfect outfit to show you so I'm just going to repeat the same thing Okay, so I finished with this dress, and you can see the bottom here looks a lot better. I'll also have pictures inserted of this in the video. I forgot to do before and after pictures of Caroline's outfit, but I also like to, with this kind of fabric, if it's a dress or, you know, a shirt, and I notice that the hemlines are all fraying, I will go ahead and melt those as, like, a way of protecting it, and... I made sure to flip this part over where the hem had been folded and I made sure to, you know, try to melt most of that just to keep it in place. I did it up at the top too and where like this big gap here of raw fabric just to be sure so now I can use this outfit and know that it's not going to fall apart. Sometimes I do this on like, really cheap clothes even if they're not like fully coming apart if I notice the inside of them the edges of the fabric are really raw and starting to fray. I will do that too, just to prevent it from happening. So, yes. So I'm about to show you what these girls look like now that their clothes have been fixed, but I'm having issues. My kitty cat is on my lap. So, Caroline's hat was sewn right here and it flips right up so you can see it's not even a part of the hat that's in the front it's right on the side here so it's not even noticeable at all and I think this is just such a cute coat on her I'm really happy with it I didn't know just how much I'd like this coat it looks great and it even looks good with her pink meat outfit because right now I don't have anything more appropriate to put under it but it looks cute and then this is the outfit that my fountain mermaid wears because it matches her beautiful hair and you can see that the ends are way better so, thank you guys all so much for watching. I hope this video helped you out. And until next time, love your dolls, love yourself, and love your life.